Why are you so sad, Hotep? Soon you will reign over all of Upper Egypt. I know, but the princess I love is far away in Lower Egypt. Yeah, you have only to ask her to join you here. Excellent suggestion. However, our enemies lie in wait. I'll send a secret message. Take care. Here comes Tutems. He is our very best secret messenger. Nobody, not even Tutems, will know the contents of your message. Tell him your message, but quietly. Nobody must know it. <laughs> now all we have to do is be patient. It takes so long. Excellent. It's impossible to read the message. <laughs> all right, now you can go. Go! Thanks. Don't mention it. <laughs> the messenger. Now we'll get him. <laughs> message! We know you are from Lower Egypt and that your mission is to deliver a secret message from Upper Egypt. Why, no. Nothing of the sort. Oh. It's another messenger. It's all right. Be on your way. Nothing. Eventually, people wanted their messages to move a little more quickly, of course. And so the Greeks. Great. The Greeks. I was sure. Yeah, the Greeks. It was more than 3,000 years ago in the Trojan War. Victory, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, King Agamemnon! We Greeks have won the battle. Quickly, you will take a message to the Queen. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I have a much faster way. Look, your majesty. A message, maestros. Where is uh -huh. maestros? Yes, mm, yeah, right beside you, Queen Gladys. Oh, I've yeah. seen the message. Oh. <laughs> well? Mm. Well? Just a second. No. The Trojan War is ended, and we've uh, won. Bah! Agamemnon is on his way home. He wants you to prepare a special dinner, leg of lamb, and to go with the leg of lamb, fresh green beans, and you're not to forget the wine from Nemea. <laughs> <laughs> and as time went on, we discovered more rapid means of transmitting messages. Even before Europeans set forth in North America, the first Americans... Peaceful bear, quickly, you have to send a message to Sly Fox. You will say tonight's meal is running toward the setting sun, and that he and his hunting braves be ready and go on. It's all right, Sly Fox has the message. He'll be there with his braves to hunt. 
The buffalo are here, brothers. All of you ready? Wait, another hot message. The wise one has put in an order. He says he would like his buffalo steak with small red apples. <laughs> And so, from century to century, people will try to communicate faster and faster. A very efficient system was to be invented by a Frenchman, Claude Schapp, in 1793. That machine will never work. <coughs> oh, la, la. Now, would you close the door, please? And the windows as well. Closed up. Nothing can get in. Nothing at all, right? No. Uh -uh. No, nothing. But why would you want everything closed? No, <laughs> no, 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 not that. <laughs> now, 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 listen to this. Hmm? And where does this music come from? Well, it's on the radio, so... I'll tell you where it's really coming from. In fact, it's really coming from an antenna, just like the Eiffel Tower in Paris. We can even do a bit better. We close the doors and windows, and, and nothing can come in or go out. But just look at the rays of the sun. That's not fair, Maestro. I mean, sunlight can just pass through the windows. Oh, yes, well, there are many things around. Invisible rays, for example, that pass through windows and through walls and all sorts of things. Oh, invisible rays? Yes, you and I, we can see only rays of visible light. But if we were able to see all the others, imagine for a second the, uh, uh, the confusion. Uh, well, it would all confuse everybody. No, no, you can believe me, it's true. Now, a German, Heinrich Hertz, learned how to transmit waves. So we could create waves and then transmit them very fast. Uh, just how fast? At the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. But we had to learn how to use them. It's an Italian, Guglielmo Marconi, who was the first to have the idea. He liked making things, and he was naturally curious. Even as a child, he did all sorts of experiments. Oh, oh, Guglielmo, oh, again. Your father would be furious. You are impossible. But, Mom, I was only trying to find out if I could create a magnetic field. Very clever, Guglielmo. Tell me how you did it. Well, my sewing machine. What am I going to do? Don't worry about it, Mom. I'll put it back together as soon as I've cooked the chicken. You see, Giuseppe, he's so good with his hands. Yes, but I wish he wouldn't break everything. This way, officer. It's over here at the Marconi's. I saw him. Alcohol, you say he's making alcohol, that's all? That's right. <laughs> Police! Okay. In the name of the law, you let me come in. It's an what? order. The law? But why? What have I done? The distillation and production of alcohol is not allowed. Alcohol in my home? I have to investigate. Inspection in the name of the law. <laughs> And what's in there? It's an attic. My son goes in there to play from time to time. Oh, he plays? Well, I'll take a look. Ah. Aha, that's alcohol. <laughs> Running an illegal distillery. Well, well. What exactly right. are you doing, Guglielmo? It's an experiment, Pop. The distillation of alcohol. It's against the law. It's my son, officer. He's always doing experiments of one sort or another, and he, he makes mistakes. Here you are, a present. Oh, no, I no, 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 I insist. Oh, well, very well. But you are not to do this anymore. And take that still apart. <laughs> well, will it be the Academy? Well, no, Pop. I failed the exams. You're good for nothing. What will we do with him? He's useless. A technical school. Maybe it's just what he needs. Yes, but I don't see how I can do him any good. The dynamo produces an electric current which is transmitted by these wires here. Bring them close to each other. In Whoa. this way, we can transmit messages great distances. 
It's the telegraph. You see? We shouldn't have to use any wires. A telegraph oh. without Whoa. wires? You're dreaming, Marconi. <laughs> With Branley's device and Popoff's antenna, the higher it is, the farther it will transmit. Please, dear, eat something. I made all your favorites. Yes, Mom. Hey. Oh. <laughs> it's fantastic. Hertz successfully transmitted messages from one end of a room to the other, and without any wires, do you realize? Yes, and so? Well, we ought to be able to use the same technique and send messages without wires all over the world. <laughs> a wireless telegraph, you're dreaming, son. Now, where is that boy? In the attic, Giuseppe. I think he's working. Working? Is that what it is? More likely breaking something. At last, you'll do us the honor of dining with us? Oh, good Lord, son, what have you done? You're a mess. Nothing, Mom. A small accident, that's all. Mom! Mom, come here, look! What is it? I'm coming! I'm coming! I did it, Mom. I really did it. Here, I want you to be the first to see it. Go on, press the small lever. Go on. Oh, there. Now, as you can see, there are no wires. Push again. Oh, yes? It's just like a telegraph, but there's no wires. Oh. But now, I have to find a way to increase the transmission range. Then I will have invented the wireless telegraph, and I'll make oh. you proud. Right, go ahead. Ha! But do all these obstacles, the hills and the walls, block the waves? Signor Marconi, waves disperse over distance. It's well known. Do you think you can receive them 20 kilometers away? Uh, well, the sun's distance is 50 million kilometers. But yet we're able to receive its rays, we agree. We feel its heat rays. That's ridiculous. We all know nothing is equal in power to the sun, and you think you'll do the same? Well, for the present, we'll be content transmitting to a hill. There, that one. My assistant is there waiting. Nonsense. If you succeed, I will eat my hat. There. <laughs> yeah, how can we be sure that there's any Got sending a message? And you, you could be cheating. Since you know Morse code, please ask any question you like. Now, let's see. I will ask, how much is two times three? There we are, the answer, yeah. six. You see, no cheating about it. Your hat, please. You said you would eat your hat. Oh. I hope you enjoy it, Signore. But in Italy, nobody was interested in Marconi's work. In 1896, he went to England. Hey, look, there. Those cases. Bombs. Yeah, there was, I know the terrorists. Let's yeah. get them. Oh. Oh. What have you in those cases? Bombs. Why, no, it's a radio. Oh, what? Never heard of that. Open it. Oh. Uh -oh. Oh. oh, no. No, stop that. You'll break the equipment. Silence! We are checking. My equipment? What are you doing? You're breaking it up. You enter now, sir. Oh! There you are, Mr. Minister. We're going to exchange signals between England and France, a distance of 46 kilometers, and we'll do it with no wires. Hmm. I make that around 30 miles. That's a long way. You think you can do it? You will see. Communication is established. Good show, Mr. Marconi. Your invention interests us. Higher! Remember, we're in Canada, and to transmit messages over 3,000 kilometers to England, the antenna has to be long. Oh! Hey, get me down! <laughs> yeah! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> this 
This will be the first transatlantic radio transmission in history. Newfoundland to Cornwall. It's time. Complete success! What are we doing here anyway? I've never been so cold. We're going to set up a radio station near the North Pole. We'll transmit all over the world. Cape Breton. That's it. We're here. Now we'll run a wire over to that hill. And another one up there. That should do it. Right. Go on, put it up. I managed to contact three different ships. I'd say they're hundreds of kilometers apart. The invention of the radio marked the beginning of a new era. Any information could now be transmitted from one end of the world to the other almost instantaneously. And for the very first time in history, ships at sea could communicate with other ships and with stations on land. So in 1990... <laughs> Position is 26 miles southwest of Nantucket. Request immediate help. There's only one distress rocket left. Captain, help's on the way. They're coming. Now reduce your speed. They'll come alongside soon. Easy does it. Go on, Captain, you can fire the last rocket. They're almost here. Come, Bins. We're saved. For the first time, ships could call for help, even if the nearest ship was far away, hundreds of kilometers. But there were tragedies, and radio couldn't stop them. Captain, it's impossible to contact them. Their radios is uh, busy. Keep trying. We have to make contact. It's vital to warn them they're in great danger. Warning, warning. You're heading for an iceberg. Immediate danger. to its radio transmitter, the Titanic was able to send out a distress call, and the SOS was heard by several ships, and they rescued survivors. 740 passengers were saved by the radio message, but it was still only one out of three, and this dramatic event brought radio to the attention of the world and made Marconi's reputation. Mr. Marconi, the British government is offering you 200,000 pounds sterling for the use of your uh -huh. invention. The Italian government, 20 million lira. The Mexican government, 50,000 pesos. The United States of America, half a million dollars. Brazil, Poland, Spain, Argentina. What will I ever do with all of it? <sighs> what is it? There's something important. Sorry, but there's something I have to see to. 
I'll be back. Yes, I know that it's possible to transmit pictures, but how? Marconi was already thinking of television, but it was still too early. Of course, it was thanks to him that radio spread all over the world. <laughs> Hey, what's that? Hey, my little boy, sees no Hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about television? I guess somebody invented it. Will you tell us? Mm -hmm. Yes, I will, because it's also a story of waves. But th these have to be really amplified. And as always, luck played a part in the discovery. Shockley, would you mind switching it on, please? Right. Ah. Ah. What are you doing under the table? Well, well we're, we're searching, searching, boss. I hope so. After all, you are research scientist, I believe. What exactly are we searching for, Britain? Uh, a small square object with three wires in it, Shockley. Uh, what is its use? Well, I don't really know, Bardeen, but I know it'll be of use. Look, there it is. I found the object. Mm -mm. No, it wasn't this, but still. I'll bet this is it. Ah. <laughs> Now, what will you do with it? Can't be much uh, use. Watch out, Walter. It's still plugged in. Do you realize that a thing we lost amplifies current? The thing is what I thought. It will intensify electric current. Like water down a waterfall. <laughs> I suppose that you're still searching, that right? No, 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 no Chief. Chief. We found! It's so small. Well, I, I guess I can't find it. This it, Maestro? Uh, ah, thank you. That's it. Let's have a look at it. Yes, it's small, but it has literally changed our world. This thing has overturned, upset, revolutionized, and turned over our world upside down, and you see what I mean? Uh, yes, it's so small. What is it, anyway? Well, this, my children, is a transistor. Huh? Hey, what do you mean, this is a transistor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. The transistor is this. It can amplify the current, then detect it. Yeah, or it can modulate it and do anything you like with it. TV sets, computers, washing machines, airplanes, satellites, you name it. It's with this we communicate, we travel, we have a look at events all over the world. We call that progress. <laughs> mm -hmm.